Hello everyone, welcome to the last video of this mini series and I'm going to talk about project acceleration. All right, what does that mean? It means that through the project we might have situations where we need to finish the project faster. What are the possibilities that we have? And I'm going to describe those possibilities in this video. Now, the first one we have is called float acceleration. Now, uh, float acceleration, this is a schedule risk uh, magnification approach, which means that you're going to be increasing. Obviously, if you are accelerating the project, you're going to be uh, increasing the risk that something might go bad. Okay, and that is the cost of trying to accelerate. But what are we going to try to do is to use the float that is used to mitigate risks is removed. So, for example, we added extra time in certain tasks because we believe those tasks are more risky. So in this approach, what we do is we eliminate that extra time. Float, uh, all that float that we have after a, a high risk task or float that was embedded in an estimate, we get rid of it and we use it to start a different task sooner. So the float must be, this float needs to be on the creative critical path to accelerate the project, otherwise it won't accelerate. And we remove the removal of this float increases the risk. And so we need to update our risk register. Now, this tool can be great, but the problem like you see over there at the end is it says it increases schedule risk. Now, what it would look like. Now, here we have a task, for example, that starts right uh, starts in October and lasts until the 21st of November. Now, I have there an area where I added a lot of float in order to mitigate some risk that I have regarding the procurement of past parts. So I eliminated that float, so therefore I can start my third task sooner. And I started, notice the difference between starting here and here starts much sooner. Okay, and now what happened, thanks to eliminating that float time, I was able to finish this project seven days earlier, so one week earlier, which is quite a good gain in terms of accelerating the project. Second technique we have is called crashing. Now, crashing is a cost versus schedule trade-off. And we basically do is we apply extra resources on a certain task to accelerate them. Not every task can be crashed. Not every task can be accelerated. Some tasks need time. You cannot accelerate the, 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 the speed at which, for example, concrete uh, dries. Well, actually, that is not true. There are ways, okay? But normally, they're not every task can be accelerated. So this, what we need to do is we spend more resources to make sure that what a specific task is done faster. And typically we have to do this on tasks that are on the critical path. Okay. Normally this results in higher cost and therefore the problem is that we increase our cost risk. Now, as an example, here we have a task, all right, that is uh, taking two weeks to perform. Now I decided to increase the amount of money that I do on that. It takes two weeks to build that prototype and I'm finishing on the 14th. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add extra resources to the task. And instead of two weeks, actually, I just need one week. And now I'm finishing my project on November 7th rather than November 14th. The next technique we have is called fast tracking. Now fast tracking is a technique that allows it's a schedule versus scope trade-off. Okay. And basically what it means is that um, I start a task before the previous task is finished. Right? This might result in extra work. We might have to redo some of the tasks. So this is a very high risk task. And we starting, like I said, the tasks earlier uh, that have a dependency upon another task that is not yet finished. So we use preliminary deliverables and there's a risk here of the deliverables changing or the results changing. And therefore all the work we did might have to be returned might have to be redone, sorry. So there is indeed here a risk of scope repeat. So what is the problem here? Here we have an interaction, task one to task two over here. So task two starts after task one is done. And basically what we did was move it. And now task two is starting before task one is done. And both of them are actually uh, done at the same time. And in this case, I started procuring the parts and searching the quality supplier. I kind of started them and making sure they're finished at the same time. What is the difference? Well, with this process, because I moved that task one week before, I was able to move the entire project one week before. And now instead of November 7, I was able to finish this task on October 31st. So this project is now finishing one week earlier. Finally, we have split, then we have split releases. Now, split release is something that does not work for every type of project, and therefore it is important that we have that in mind. This is a schedule versus scope trade-off, and basically we are dividing the project deliverables into multiple releases. So instead of just having, for example, here one prototype, we divide it into two 
different prototypes. The focus here is the project resources on release um, to be completed sooner. So what we want to make sure is that actually we finish the project sooner rather than later. And uh, this will delay the later release, okay? But it might create better quality products to be launched. And the deliverables must be separatable and have unique priorities for this to be able to be done. So overall, what will happen is that this will, uh, overall it delays the project completion. But as you can see here is that, well, just to let you know, I said here we would finish test one or our prototype on October 31st. And then you're saying, well, but we're not finishing sooner because this project now is finishing on October 5th. Yes, but that's test two because test one is actually done two days sooner. I can finish test two. Uh, prototype one on day 29 prototype two will be an improvement on this one so what happens is because i'm using several releases my first release will be lower quality but i can do that to get feedback from my customer and therefore when i create my second release then i have better quality so the trick here is that trying to bring the product to the consumer as quickly as possible so that we get feedback faster and we can improve better the product as well so as you can see this is something that we we really do trade schedule for for scope but in this case what we're trading is saying that we spend more time but we get better quality so this is an accelerator as well because it allows us to achieve higher quality faster than before finally the last one we call it mainline offline scheduling so what does that mean we accelerate the project by keeping offline tasks out of the main line of the project. Okay, what is an offline task? It's basically a task that um, can be done without much interference from the other tasks. All right. In other words, it's a task that basically does not require the, the same amount of effort. So we segregate critical paths into mainline and offline. Okay, so we're talking here about what are what tasks are unique and what tasks are more generic, and we separate those two. Then we pull the offline tasks out of the main line of the critical path and do them in parallel with the main tasks. Okay. In other words, any tasks that are not unique, that are more generic, then we do them at the same time as our unique tasks or in separate because those are technically easier or there are more people that are available to do those tasks. Okay. Now what happens, for example, here is that uh, test setup and plan, for example, and um, the test setup and plan. So phase one testing completes on October 29. But in this case, the test setup and plan was prepared generally offline. In other words, you can uh, prepare it ahead of time so that when you have to set up things here over here on the first one, uh, I added that time to the tasks itself. Um, but in the second option, I separated that task specifically from the others. And now what it allows me is this task over here, it's very simple because I can prepare it any time. So actually I started preparing it at the very beginning of the project. And then when time comes, I will use it, the materials from that. And this has allowed me to shave off two days out of the schedule. What does that mean? Basically means this, um, during the project, there's many tasks that you cannot predict or fully do in advance, but there are many things that you know you're gonna have to prepare. For example, uh, you're gonna have to prepare, for example, um, a meeting with specific documents for to present to your boss. Well, you don't know the information that you're gonna have on those documents, but from the very beginning, you can already create the templates. This is what we call offline work. Now, the templates that will be used later on all right. You don't need to create them when you need them. If you create at the very beginning, then by the time that you actually get the data, all you have to do is insert the data and the time that you free over there can be used to do other things. So tasks that are more generic, we're going to do them in times that we have the time to do those tasks rather than waiting for the last possible minute. OK, in other words, this is the opposite of procrastination. And that's exactly the thing. The requirement of this task is that or the requirement of this technique is that you need to plan it in advance and you need to know when is the time to do these tasks. Right. So in this last video, I covered indeed acceleration tasks. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you have any questions. And that's it for this mini series about uh, project control. OK, I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next video.